everyone, my name's Stacey and welcome to Quilt Club with Stacey Lee. This is week two of my special series where I teach you how to make a quick and simple quilt that's perfect to donate to charity. I plan on donating mine to Comfort Cases, which is a nationwide charity here in the USA that makes up cases to send to children in foster care. And in that case, they include a quilt and that's where I intend to send mine. I'll be thrilled to bits if you decide to join me. quilt I'll be using four fabrics for my quilt top and fleece for my backing and the first thing we need to do is give our quilt top fabric an iron and if you're unsure exactly how to prepare your fabric to iron you can always watch my video on that which is above but for now I'm going to iron my fabric and I'll meet you at my cutting mat. Okay so now I've ironed my four fabrics what I need you to do is I need you to cut four six and a half inch strips from each piece of fabric please. So now I've cut my six and a half inch strips for each fabric and I've got four strips per fabric. Now what you need to do is decide what order you'd like to sew them in. And I need you to bear in mind, and if you look at my pattern in your notes, you'll see what I mean. These outside fabrics always sit next to each other and these inside fabrics always sit next to each other. So you just need to bear that in mind when you're placing them. For example, if these outside fabrics are very similar in either pattern or color that may look quite heavy in your quilt so you might want to split them up so then i've pinned my number cards to the top of each column and then that's the order we'll be sewing them in and we need to sew them in the same order every time so once i've sewn this top lot together i'll take my number cards and put them down onto the next group so that i know i'm not accidentally mixing up the order and you can find my number cards and my pattern in the description below so I've got my strips ready to sew. I've put them in the order of one, two, three, four. I'm sorry, I didn't realize that I was standing behind and it looked like I had them back to front. So when you're sewing your strips together, sew them all in the same order. That's critical for our pattern design. So I'll take columns one and two and I'm going to sew them together. So now we're gonna line our edges up and sew. You can pin if you'd like, that's entirely up to you. So now I'm going to sew along my edge at a quarter inch seam allowance and all the same rules apply. I've got my bobbins full, I've checked my sewing machine is stitching nicely, I've got my quarter inch foot on, I'm stitching at stitch length 2 and I'm ready to go. And then I'll just come past the end, trim that off, and then come back up to the top and attach my column three. I'm going to line them up at the top nicely and so it doesn't matter too much how they end up at the bottom because they are from different fabric lines. The width is slightly different. So I've got two and three. I'll line up the edges of my fabric and I'll pin them. And then I'll sew column three on and then I'll sew column four on and I'll do this for all of my groups of four. on my four columns together what I would like you to do is to do the same but for all four groups of your four strips and then please press them 
So set the seams and then press them all in one direction. So we've sewn our four groups together and we should have four groups of fabric like this. We've pressed them and we've pressed our seams all in the same direction. Now we need to cut each of these blocks into six and a half inch strips. Now it's a little bit longer than a standard ruler. So what I'm going to suggest is we fold it in half just once to get our first straight line. I'm not a big fan of folding in half. It makes me a little bit nervous and it's not my favorite way of doing things, but sometimes it's the easiest. So that's what we're going to do now. So I'm just going to fold it in half and I'm going to line up my line on a line of my mat and just cut my first straight line making sure I'm losing all my salvages. So I'm lining it up, the line of my fabric on a line of my ruler, and I'm lining it up on a line of my mat, and then I'll cut. And now we have our first straight line to work from. So I don't want to do that the whole way through because I do worry that it can you can get elbows and it can get a bit crooked, especially if we have to do that five or six times along the whole strip. Okay, so I've spun my block around so that my edge that I just cut is on a line and I've taken this ruler which is much wider so I can cut it six and a half inches and I'll have to do two cuts, but at least I know they'll be accurate. And what I've done is I've put some painter's tape on and I've put it on right after the six and a half inch mark. So it's not showing me what to line up my fabric with. It's just showing me that the mark right after the painter's tape is where I want to line up with. What it means is I won't accidentally cut it too big or too small. So long as I've always lined up with exactly the line after the painter's tape. So I'll line it up the edge of my fabric with a line on my ruler and then with that six and a half inch mark on my ruler and I'll cut this piece that's moved so I'll check again and when you've got a bigger ruler it's best just to put your pressure down on the middle and then I'll cut and then I'll move my ruler up so then I'm lining it up on this line again and I'm making sure it's lined up with the line I've just cut and then I'll cut and then I'll line it up again and cut so we need to do that for all the fabric we need to get at least five strips out of every block we've sewn together you might get six in which case you'll have a few left over so now I have my six and a half inch strips cut. You should have 20 and now we're going to sew them together. So I'm going to take this strip and I'm going to always remember that I've got my peach with my polka dots at the top left. And then I'm going to take a second one and I'm going to have my peach polka dots at the bottom right. And then I'll fold them over and I will sew them together, matching up those seams. So we have to nest the seams here. So when we're nesting seams, we're taking the two joins, this side's folded over and going this way, this side's folded over and going this way. We match them up, push them together until we can't go any further. And then we take a pin, and I like to pin on this side, catching it at the back. And then I like to pin on the other side, making sure I've caught the back as well. And we do that on every join again matching up those seams nesting the seams you can open it up to check that they're matched up so we're pushing them against each other they can't go any further I can open it up to check it then I'm just going to pin on the left hand side the right hand side and I'll do that for all the seams and then we'll sew those two together and as I come up to my pins, I'll just carefully take them out. I'll just pop that one aside and then I'll take my next set. And again, I want my peach polka dot at the top. Your fabric will be whatever it is. 
but make sure whatever it is it's at the top left and the other ones at the bottom right and then we'll fold them together to sew them together on these seams here we'll nest the seams by pushing them up against each other lining up the edge of the fabric we can open it up to check that they're matched up And do that for all the seams. You might like to add in a few more pins, that's entirely up to you, and then we'll sew that one as well. Okay, so do that for all your 20 strips and then we're going to sew them together and at this point we can't go wrong in which way we match them up because they're the same on either side so I could match them up there or on the other side and it works perfectly so at this stage we would normally press our seams but I'm going to skip that step at this stage so that I can make sure I can nest these seams just to make it a little bit easier for myself so I'm going to fold them over, match up those seams and then I'm going to push one to the left and one to the right. Now they're not pressed but they're behaving nicely anyway. So I'll match them up, I'll put a pin on, on either side and then we'll sew them together. And like I said you might want to put an extra pin in here, that's entirely up to you. Okay, so if you could do that for all of your strips, first sew them together and then sew those paired up strips together as well. And then once you've done that, let's give them all a press in the same direction. So now we've got five blocks of two rows sewn together and please give them a press. Now we're going to sew them all together and you can't go wrong because they're interchangeable. So it doesn't matter how we sew them together it's going to be correct. So I'm going to fold them over and match up my seams and I'll nest my seams and sew each of these rows together just like we did before. Nesting the seams and pinning and please do this for all of the rows and then our cork top is finished. Once all your rows are sewn together, please give your quilt top a good press. Okay guys, so now I've put my fleece down, which is what I'm using for my backing. I haven't taped it down because in my opinion, it's too stretchy and it's too easy to stretch it rather than just tape it in place. So I've just got it sitting on my bench top here and I've got the right side facing up and then I've got my quilt top and I've got my quilt top facing down. I've given that a really good iron or press rather and then I've smoothed it out and once I'm happy that my fleece is smooth my quilt top is smooth I'm going to pin it in place with some pins all the way around the edge and then we'll sew Okay guys, I've finished pinning and now let's sew around the edge. Okay, so now we're going to sew along the edge of our quilt top and what we need to do is we need to leave a part of it open so that we can turn it inside out to finish it off. So what I've done is I've come along and I've put some pins in going in another direction to help me know that when I get to them to stop sewing. So what I'll do is I'll count one block two blocks and then I'm going to start from here and I'm going to sew all the way around and then when I get to these pins facing this way down I'll know to stop. So I've decided to use a standard foot rather than my quarter inch because I just want to get a slightly bigger seam allowance than a quarter inch. It's not a half an inch it's 
somewhere in between a quarter and a half. So I'll begin sewing. I will do a back stitch. And I'm gonna sew all the way around until I get to my pins. And when I come up to a corner, I'm just gonna judge by eyeballing it how close to come to the edge before I need to turn. So we wanna turn it about the same width of the seam allowance. So just eyeball it, make sure your needle's down, lift your foot up, turn, and then carry on. up to my pins facing this way I'm going to sew up to the seam and then do back stitch now we just have to cut off this excess fleece Okay, now I'm just going to cut the excess fleece off. This is a nice strip here, so I might actually straighten that up so I can use that as a ribbon to tie my quilt when I'm finished. But for now, I'm just going to cut this excess off. I'm going to line up my ruler on the edge of my quilt top, and I'm just going to cut all the excess off around all four sides. cut off all the excess off all four sides I'm just going to give the corners a little nip to reduce some of the bulkiness on the corners so I'll just trim them off carefully well away from the stitching on all four corners okay and now we're going to turn it inside out so we're going to find our opening I'm going to put my hand in and I'm going to grab a corner and I'm going to turn it in and grab it and pull it out And then we have our inside out quilt. So you might want to go in and find every corner and give it a good poke so you've got nice pointy corners. And when you've got all four corners done, you can straighten it out. And now what we can do is just give it a really gentle iron on the seam here just so it's going to sit nice and flat when we sew around the edge. Okay so I've just pressed along the top of the quilt top and I've just made sure that it's sitting nice on both sides and be careful that you don't iron the fleece if you're using fleece because it will burn and I just pushed it up and against it so that it's sitting nice and flat and pressed it and then we just have this bit here where we have our opening what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull it down and just press that about the same width as my seam allowance so that then I can fold this over marry them up and pin it and then we'll sew that closed so I'm just going to press that so it's easier to fold being careful not to get my fleece and then I'll fold my fleece over matching it up with the edge of my quilt top and I'll pin that in place I'm actually going to come this way so I'm getting more of it so that it's much more secure it is a bit bulky and I feel like that's the best way to pin this So I'll do that away along the whole opening. OK, 
Okay, and now we're gonna sew along the whole edge. So just make sure you've pressed down your quilt top so it's sitting nice and flat before we do that. Okay, so now we're gonna stitch around the whole edge of our quilt top and I'm gonna be starting at our opening and I'm using a walking foot because I have to stitch through two layers of quilting fabric and two layers of the fleece, so it seems to make the most sense to me. I'll be stitching at stitch length 2.5 and I'll be doing a back stitch. So when I get to my corner, I'll come down to approximately the same seam allowance that I'm stitching at. And then I'll make sure my needle is down. I'll lift my foot and I'll turn it. And then I'll carry on down this whole edge. So if I can see the gray is sort of trying to come over to the front, I'm just pushing it back down and under so that when I'm sewing it, it's sitting nice and flat. Okay, and when I get back to where I started, I'll do another back stitch, just so that's nice and secure. Okay, I'm going to quilt mine and that's because although it's secure, the quilt top to the backing, I'm worried that when it goes through the wash, the quilt top stitches are potentially going to fray. So I feel like if it's quilted down, it's going to be much more sturdy and be able to handle the wash a lot better. So quilt yours however you'd like. I've decided to sew mine on the diagonal and I'm actually going to eyeball it. So if you want to, you could do yours on the diagonal and you could always use the masking tape technique and put some tape down showing you where to sew. You could eyeball it, you could do stitch in the ditch, anything you want. I'm using my gloves today because I'm going to admit it, I'm converted. I love them. So I'll see you in a bit. I just have to quilt this quilt. So I am coming down to where I stitched on the edges and I'll back stitch there. Just remember that we will see where we've stopped and started. And I did put a few basting pins in just to keep it secure. Okay everyone, I've finished my quilt now and you can quilt yours however you want. What I decided to do was start at a seam and then I sewed down. I turned and then I went down and then I turned and went down as many times as I could until I couldn't turn anymore because I met up with another line that I'd already sewn so that I didn't have too many stops and starts. But quilt yours however you'd like to and if you do choose to donate it to Comfort Cases I'll be thrilled to bits. All the details are in the description below and if you're a member of my group you can also go in my drawer for the giveaway. Thank you for watching my videos. If you're enjoying them, please like, subscribe and leave a comment. 